Hello, Bella. Hi. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for having me. It's like an unusual thing because I I don't I just I discovered you on Instagram by accident. I don't know how. And then I was like, this girl can play and she's young. I didn't know how old you were. And then I realized how old you were. How old are you exactly? I am 15. That's what I thought. 15. So why don't you tell me about your ch early childhood and how and when you started listening to music? Because I'm fascinated about that. So I started up right in the beginning of COVID, actually, and I, you know, found my mom's old guitar in the garage, and I never really thought I was going to become so interested in playing music, and I just needed something to kind of put attention towards, and I fixed up the guitar, and... At the time, I was listening to a lot of 90s grunge and alternative, and that's really my passion. Um, so I was learning a lot of, you know, Nirvana songs just to start off. Okay, I'm a little, I'm a little, this is wild. So you're telling me you've only been playing for three years? Three years, yeah. What? Yep. Was your mother in a band or a musician? She... Um, no, she wouldn't say so. No, no. Well, but you, she had a guitar. She had a guitar from when she was in high school and I don't think she ever picked it up much. So was it electric or acoustic? It was an electric. It was a Strat. So you started playing a Strat three years ago, three years ago. Hey mom, what's this? Wow. So, uh... Okay. So at the time you were listening to, excuse me for being a little perplexed, but you're pretty good for someone who's only been playing for three years. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure you've been hearing that a lot lately. Um, so you were listening to Nirvana. That Was that the, the main band that you discovered early on? Yeah, I think it was just like a, oh, um, the, my parents had suggested some Nirvana songs and I was like, oh, I really like this. And then, um, it kind of just kickstarted me from there. So besides Nirvana, were there other bands that you were checking out at that time? So it's kind of a funny story. I got pretty into the Seattle grunge music, and I started to kind of dive deeper into the roots of that. And bands like Mother Love Bone, Green River, um, Mud Honey. So a lot of the early... 90s bands okay Love that, Pearl Jam okay this is really fantastic you know I, I actually worked with Mother Love Bone many years ago on the Shine EP I have an autographed wow. uh, copy of it with Starman Andrew Woods it's one of my most prized possessions actually and what? you know Mother Love Bone you probably know the story you know Andrew died before their album even came out it was the EP that we worked on when I was at Metal Blade Records and um I got to see them and I and that's when I met Stone and Jeff because they came to my office at like 8 30 in the morning one day and I and, and they said and I was like dude I know you guys you guys were in Green River right but no one knew Green what? River it's not like they were famous or anything they were like an underground band basically you know so I'm fascinated by that and I'm going to talk to you about that in, in a minute but um so when you got your guitar and you started playing it, did you have all that? Did you have the gear? I mean, because you have a lot of gear. <laughs> I, um, I had, I had an acoustic guitar and I had, I had just gotten this right before that. So I had an acoustic guitar and an acoustic guitar amp. And I was running my Strat through an acoustic guitar amp. And honestly, one of the first things that kind of turned me on to the rock and roll sound was I had a compression pedal and I would I would wait for the nine volt battery to die and it would give this really crunchy distortion sound and I was like ah, this is really cool this is for me this is my sound so um I was like dad can we go to the guitar shop we're gonna get a <laughs> distortion pedal and we're gonna get 
some more stuff from there. So your parents were really supportive of you playing. Oh, yes. My parents have been so supportive, and I'm so lucky to have such great support from them. I should have asked you this before, but where where are you in, in California? I am in Northern California. I'm in Mendocino. Oh, I love Mendocino. It's right wine country, whales, surfing. I lived in LA for 14 years when I worked for labels and I went to a wedding once on a cliff in Mendocino. So I love it there. Beautiful place. We're Um, right on the water. Yeah, exactly. Um, So do you remember some of the first songs that you played? Were they all Nirvana songs? I think some of the first songs I played were definitely Alive by Pearl Jam, Come As You Are by Nirvana. A lot of songs like that. Definitely um, some Stone Temple Pilots songs, uh, Smashing Pumpkins. So you're like 15 and the bands that you're listening to were all like early 90s bands. Yeah. You weren't born yet. No. It's kind of like me saying, yeah, well, I listen to the Beatles and the Stones, you know? So, yeah. I, okay, sorry, I don't get speechless too often, but I just became speechless. Were you? Did you have friends or something? Or who, who was into the Seattle sound that got you into it? Because you would only, this would have to have been around 2000. Well, this is like so far after the grunge scene. How did you find all these bands? I really just, I really just started listening to the music and I was like trying to find the most different music and most different outlook on starting up a music project. And I really just wanted to have that different. I was like, this is really different. And it really stood out to me. So were your parents listening to, I mean, where did you hear the Spotify or uh, streaming? Did you have records? I mean. Uh, I have a lot of records from the nineties and my parents were big fans, of course, um, in that time, but i watched a lot of the live concerts as many as I could on YouTube and mm-hmm. listen on Spotify, of course. Did you take any lessons? I am completely self-taught. Wow. Impressive. So I've never had any lessons. Never been trained at all. Picked it all up yourself. It's incredible. I read the article in Guitar Girl magazine and saw that your favorite musicians and you had all these Seattle bands. And this is why I wanted to wait a second because the name that stuck out for me the most was Andrew Wood from Mother Love Bone. Uh, and I told you, I actually got to work with those guys. Um, what was it about Mother Love Bone that caught your attention and made them one of your favorite bands? Oh, Mother Love Bone instantly got my attention. And, you know, really feeling that 90s Seattle sound, I heard Mother Love Bone and I was like, this is it. <laughs> This is it. This is like the root of everything. And then learning more about that, figuring out how they kind of progressed into Pearl Jam. And, you know, Stone Gossard and Jeff, Jeff Amet are some of my inspir- like absolute inspirations. So when I found out, having already listened to Green River, I was like, these are my guys. And it was just amazing. And where did you find Green River? I guess just searching through different bands and looking at their musicians and reading their stories. So I actually got to visit Seattle for my, we actually try to go every year for my birthday. And I go and record with some other musicians there. And we're hoping to visit real soon. So I was lucky enough to visit London Bridge Studio, where they recorded most of those albums. And I met with one of the engineers there, Jonathan Plum. And he 
taught me a lot about some of the bands like Green River and Mother Love Bone. I got to hear some isolated tracks of Andy, which really just pushed pushed my um my drive from there. I got to sit at the Chloe Dancer piano. Wow. So. Were you and your mom and dad weren't really involved in music at all? No, they're they're huge fans of music and um they definitely have a lot of interest in that, but they're not musicians. Themselves. But they, but they allowed you to go. They took you to Seattle, and you were able to visit the studio and meet some okay. of these people. That's fantastic. Um, I also read that you went to the Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp in LA, and you got to jam with Jerry Cantrell from Alice in Chains. I saw that. Kim from Soundgarden. I I worked at AM Records too, so I worked with Soundgarden too. This is why your story is so interesting to me because I was. When I was at AM Records, we put Temple of the Dog out. So I was like right in the uh-huh. middle of the whole thing, you know? And Dave Cruz, who was the original drummer or the second drummer, but he, he played on the 10 records. So that makes him like, you know, automatic rock and roll hall of fame. Um, that's some pretty heavy company. Uh, you got to play with those guys. What what was that like? And how did, did they let everyone play with them or did they pick out certain people at the camp? So I got the opportunity to attend that camp and I got together with a group of other young musicians and we started practicing in this camp for a band and I honestly had no idea what I was getting into and this was really my first time getting to play with another band and with new people and getting to play live so it was a really really fantastic experience but i had no idea did did they put different stu did it different campers together and form bands is that how it worked yes so how did they decide who to put like how did you end up with a certain group of people i don't know but it worked out really well <laughs> Were there a lot of people your age that were like into the heavy guitar sound that you're that you have? No, I was. I think I was actually the youngest one there. Really? Yeah. And and when did do you realize that you're going to get to jam with Jerry and Kim and Dave Cruz? Jerry was um a big part of it we got there and we had been rehearsing and i think the third day was jerry day jerry day <laughs> jerry day it was like, um and we got up that morning and i was like i don't know how i'm gonna, i don't know how i'm going to stand up there with jerry cantrell <laughs> I think this is a good time for me to hit you with something I didn't tell you I'd hit you with. Okay, so you've got Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, Nirvana, and Pearl Jam. I want you to rank those bands. Which one's your favorite? And and give them give me the top four in the order because I'm curious because I know my top four. You tell me yours first. I think I'm gonna have to go with Pearl Jam as number one. Um, I love Pearl Jam. I love all of them as people and like I wish all all of the bands are so amazing but I hope to have the opportunity to meet some of the other Pearl Jam guys eventually someday um number two that is a really hard question (laughs) I know it is (laughs) um probably Alice in Chains Really? So you like the heavy. Yeah. Okay, you just went real heavy on me. Yeah. And third is <laughs> Nirvana and Soundgarden tie for me. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I would probably put have Pearl Jam number one on my list and I'd probably go Soundgarden, Nirvana, Alice in Chains in that order. But I do love all those bands. Um oh, yeah. Pearl Jam, you know, they're They've just been able to withstand the, the test of time, you Absolutely. know? Absolutely. 
And it's sad what happened to Chris Cornell. I, I met Chris a long time ago and I, and it's just really sad. Same thing with the singer of Alice in Chains. I mean, it's like, and Kurt, you know, I mean, these people died way too young, which is really, un, you know, would you say that those are your, that Pearl Jam is your number one favorite band? Because I was going to ask you this actually first, you got into Mother Love Bone and these bands. Did you ever hear of like Led Zeppelin? I did. I did. Which is, it's actually pretty weird thinking, looking back on it now, I go, huh, I never started off playing the classic rock guitar and Jimmy Page. And I did, I did and do love Pink Floyd. David Gilmore is a huge inspiration. Mm. So, Did you notice that the Seattle bands may have been influenced a little bit by Zeppelin and bands like that when you heard their music? Yes. And I'm just now really realizing that and going through people like Mike McCready's um, influences. And he talks a lot about how his influencers are David Gilmour and Jimmy Page and a lot of others. So, Did you know who Jeff Beck was? Yes. Yeah, he just passed away recently. He was... He, he, Brian May from Queen and Jeff Beck are my two favorite guitar players. Not that you, wow. you're asking or anything, but I'm just volunteering oh. that information. That's um, great. I like your setup and your videos. And I, I want to ask you about your gear. Uh, like, what's your favorite? Because I think I've seen uh, Marshall Stacks there and I've seen Ar Orange. You have an Orange amp too, right? I so do. what? So what do you, what do you, what's your go-to now? I just got the orange recently and I I don't know. I'm really loving it. It's really great. The Marshall is a totally different sound for me, but it's really, they're both amazing amps, but I've been using the orange a lot more recently since I've got it. I love Super orange. Super excited. Oh, I love orange. Um, are you jamming with any people in your in your town, in your neighborhood? I mean, I know Mendocino's not exactly a city. It's kind of out in the it's kind of rural, isn't it? It is rural. So I've recently had the opportunity to play with some local bands have kind of brought me under their wing, which has been a really awesome experience. And I'm playing with a local band called Boonfire right now. And Honestly, they're kind of a different feel for me, and I've been learning a lot. They play more of a 90s alternative surf kind of. They play a lot of Sublime, No Doubt, Stone Temple Pilots, um, a lot of bands like that. So it's different. But So I'm it's a cover a really band. Time. They're actually putting out a new album soon. Uh, of originals? Of originals, and Are they have gonna... one album out. Are you going to play on their record? You'll have to stay tuned. <laughs> uh, that that was going to be my next question. Are you writing at all? I am. I'm actually working with a couple mentors in LA right now on songwriting. And you'll have to really stay tuned for that. It's, You're <laughs> not going to give excited. us any scoops at all, are you? <laughs> So, so you're, did you, have you tried writing a song on your own or are you just working with other songwriters? Uh, I have tried writing a song on my own and I'm actually working on one right now, believe it or not. Cool. And are you going to, are you going to do, are you writing on your electric or are you writing acoustic? The intro is acoustic and then it goes into kind of a heavier, like it goes into a heavier part. No, I haven't heard you sing. Do you sing also, or are you just predominantly a guitar player? I am kind of getting out of my comfort zone and working on singing, and it's really out of my shell because I just dove into guitar and never having any lessons or anything. I think my learning process was definitely different, which I appreciate a lot, and I think that I got things that, you know, formal guitar lessons couldn't give me um by watching watching bands and watching my favorite guitarists i feel like i picked up a lot of their technique firsthand so, now are you are you do you go are you in high school right now you are right i am i am in an online school right now oh cool so um 
do you have friends that share similar tastes as far as your music go? Or you find yourself out in an island kind of in a way? I try to get some of my friends to listen to. My friends are very supportive of me playing music and they come and see me play a lot. But we're we're pretty different as far as music goes. I can, but I mean, you can't blame them. My taste is a little bit old school. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. I'd say. Um, I was going to ask you one more thing. Uh, is there any new music that's coming out these days that you're into? Or are you just caught in that, the 90s grunge? <laughs> it's actually been really great for me to see rock and roll kind of coming back. And mm -hmm. it definitely was kind of out for a couple years and now it's definitely coming back and especially having a lot of women in rock and roll now i know it's yeah. a predominantly male-led industry so it's great to see other girls coming together and kind of bringing that back and uh, i see a lot of girl bands in la and seattle and i'm listening to them and i'm listening to so yeah there is some new stuff that i'm listening to I think I read that you like Kim Gordon. I do like Kim Gordon. So Sonic Youth is a lot different than than the Seattle bands. So you don't mind going a little more edgier and indie rock direction? Oh, absolutely not. No. Love Sonic Youth. Love love all of those bands. Cool. So um you were kind of secretive about what you're going to be doing, <laughs> whether you're going to be playing on a record or not. So um, basically your Instagram page, is that where people are going to find out all the news on Bella Rain? We're starting up some other platforms right now, but so YouTube is going to be great. And then Instagram. Cool. Okay. Is it... I've loved I've loved being able to use Instagram to connect. Oops, with I lost other your people. volume for some reason. Oh, are you still there? Can you hear me? Hello. I don't know what happened. Can you hear me? Oh, there you are. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I lost you for a second. Um. Well, anyways, that was pretty much the, unless you had something else you wanted to say, you pretty much covered it for me. Oh, I was just saying that I've loved being able to use Instagram to connect with other people all around the world and connect with other musicians. And just starting up, I started posting covers with some of my friends um, in different places who lived in different states. And we would just send each other music and put it together and um and I never really thought it would take off and then it's just really springboarded from there for me cool well hey I, I wish it. you I wish you the best of luck I'm glad I found your your page because I'm really impressed at, by what you're doing thank you thanks Bella thank you so much for having me it was a pleasure to meet you my pleasure thanks